In the video on the Tektronix Type 130 LC meter, we saw that at low C, 10 picofarad or less, we had to be careful with the alligator clip leads adding capacitance to the circuit and skewing the measurement. That got me thinking about the capacity per length of wires commonly used in electronics and how to calculate that. In this video, we're going to measure a situation where we have two pieces of number 18 AWG wire, two meters long and laid parallel to one another. We're going to measure that capacitance, and then we're going to see if we could have predicted the capacitance without measuring it on an LC meter. Let's get started. So here's the layout that we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be measuring and then computing. I've got uh, these two pieces of wire. They don't look terribly parallel uh, the way I've got them taped up on the bench. And they're not exactly parallel, but I uh, think it will make the point. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the LC meter and we're going to measure the capacitance and we're going to see what it measures. And when we measure the wire using the DE5000 LCR meter, we get 10.2 picofarad. So that is the result for two meters of wire. Now I'm going to clip these wires halfway so that we only have one meter of parallel wires and we're going to see what we get. So notice how when I, uh, move, you, you can't see it, it's off camera, but notice when I move around and get close to the wires the reading goes up because my body is adding capacitance to the to the situation. All right, so here I'm getting closer to the wires. And you can see it go up. Now I'm going to clip them. There's one clipped. And there's two clipped. <clears throat> and now I'm going to step back away from the, the circuit and hopefully remove my capacitance. And we see that we get about 4 picofarad. So we went from roughly 10 to roughly 4 picofarad. And the question is, is that what we would have expected? Well, I'm glad you asked. You may be familiar with the expression for capacitance, or the definition, which is the total charge across a conductor in the neighborhood of another conductor uh, divided by the potential difference, or the voltage, between the two. But how do we really apply this formula in order to solve the riddle of calculating the capacitance of two parallel uh, pieces of wire? Well, it's not difficult if you break the problem up into pieces. So the way that we're going to do that in this video is we're going to First, we're going to calculate the electric field due to one piece of charged wire. And then we will, of course, know it by symmetry for two pieces of charged wire. Then we're going to calculate the potential between those two pieces of wire. And then finally, we'll be able to calculate the capacitance given the potential. So one approximation that we're going to make is we're going to assume that our wire is very long, or it's infinitely long, compared to the diameter of the wire. So first of all, how do you calculate the electric field of this piece of wire? Well, we're going to use Gauss's law. And Gauss's law says that for a charged conductor, or for any charge in space, if you surround that charge by an imaginary surface, called a Gaussian surface typically, that the total flux of the electric field through that surface is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And epsilon naught here is what's known as the permeativity of free space. Put mathematically, we could say that the flux is equal to the surface integral of E dot dA. All right, so here is a piece of wire that uh, I've drawn and a Gaussian surface which will be just a, an imaginary cylinder around that wire. You could think of it as a pill bottle, if you like. 
And we know that if this wire is charged, that the electric field will be radially outward if this is a positive charge on the wire. So, the electric field by symmetry is radial only, perpendicular to the charged wire, and it will of course be a function of distance r from that wire. So then, by Gauss's law, we know that the total flux, because we've set this symmetry up in a very uh, contrived way, that surface integral becomes very easy. In fact, it just becomes uh, E times the surface area of the pill bottle, which is just 2 pi r times L, where this is L. All right? So that's the flux, and that has to be equal to the charge enclosed uh, divided by epsilon naught. And so the charge enclosed now is just going to be the charge per unit length, which we'll call lambda, times the length, which we'll call L. So the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught is just lambda L over epsilon naught. And that's going to be equal to E times 2 pi RL. So, given that, we now know that the electric field due to a single charged wire is going to be equal to lambda over 2 pi R epsilon naught. And this is a vector quantity, and so the, it's going to be a unit vector pointing outwards in the radial direction. Or if we define K to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, we can say that E is 2K lambda over R. So we've done the first step. We've calculated the electric field due to a charged wire. For step two, let's think about two long wires parallel to each other, one with positive charge on it and one with the negative charge on it. Let each one have a radius of A, so they're equal radii wires, and suppose that their axes are a distance d apart. So this is the situation here. So these wires are d apart, or I should say the middle parts of the wires are d apart. They each have radius a. And one is going to have positive charge, so we'll call that positive lambda. One's going to have a negative charge, negative lambda. So the next thing that we assume here is that, as I said in the opening shot, uh, D is much, much greater than A. So the wires are far apart compared to the thickness of the wires. Just a couple more geometrical things, and then we'll be off into the races for computing the potential. We're going to express the electric field at a point in between these two wires, which we'll call a distance X from the middle part of the left wire. And because these are d apart from one another, this distance is going to be d minus x. All right. Using the expression that we calculated for the electric field, we know that the electric field in between these two wires is just going to be the superposition of the electric field due to any one of the wires. So we're going to have E now at a point x is equal to 2k lambda over x plus 2k lambda over d minus x. And the vectors here both point in the right-hand direction because you'll recall that this is positively charged, so the electric field will point outward that way. This is negatively charged, so the electric field due to this one will point inward in this direction. All right. Given the field, we can now compute the potential. The potential is just a line integral of E dot DL, where DL is just an infinitesimal distance in space. And in this case, we're going to take it to be just simply DX. So we have the integral from A, the outward radius of the wire on the left, to D minus A, the outward uh, piece of the wire on the right. E dot DL, so that's going to be 2k lambda integral from a to d minus a of the quantity 1 over x plus 1 over d minus x dx. 
And I won't bore you with the details, but that then becomes delta V, the difference in potential between those two wires, is actually 4k lambda times the natural log of d minus a over a. So that's step two. And then the last step then is to just simply compute the capacitance. So we know that the capacitance is going to be Q over the change in potential. So let's divide C by L and Q by L so that we have the capacity per unit length is then just equal to Q over L or lambda divided by delta V. Okay, but we computed delta V up here. So C, when you do the algebra, just turns out to be pi epsilon naught times L divided by the natural logarithm of d minus a over a. Lots of math, but let's reduce it to numbers and see what it predicts. So let's take two meters of wire, like we had in the uh, beginning shot. Suppose the uh, distance between them is a quarter of a meter. And let's suppose that we're using 18 gauge wire, which has a diameter of one millimeter or a radius of 0 0.5 millimeters. Well, when you plug that in, you get that the capacitance for two meters of uh, parallel wire is equal to about nine picofarad. And recall that we were measuring around 10. So that's not too bad. I wasn't exact on my length. Those wires were not perfectly parallel. Now, when we cut that in half, that nine picofarad, we just, you know, divide it by two because the capacitance is directly proportional to the length. So if you divide nine by two, you get four and a half. And recall that when we snipped the wires, we got four picofarad, and theoretically it should be four and a half. All right, so just a quick little video here to demonstrate that you can actually predict things based on some fairly simple physics, and then it's always nice to follow through and measure them as well. But I hope you gain some sense of the amount of capacitance that is involved in using, you know, kind of lengths of wire and thicknesses of wire that, that we would all use uh, on the bench or uh, in antenna work or so on and so forth. I hope you found this interesting. If so, please give it a big thumbs up below. And as always, thanks for watching.